questions about that. So how important is it to pray towards the Qibla? And is it important to do what we'll do with water all the time? It, it's a valid question, so we'll answer it. Definitely, absolutely. Um, so is it, let, let me tell you something. In fiqh, and it's not a fiqh class today, but we're going to go into fiqh or Islamic rulings for a moment. Across all the schools, the rule is, that you have to determine the location or the direction of the Qibla in order for your, val your prayer to be valid. Interestingly, it means that you exert your best effort. So, dear sisters, these phones that you carry, they have a built-in compass. Yeah? And in your prayer app, it also has a compass. And I am old enough <laughs> to have carried compasses, actual compasses, with me forever, everywhere I went, in school, college, you know, whatever, everywhere, everywhere we went, everywhere we went, right, before these smartphones happened and then we became kind of dumb and we forgot how to, like, figure out the direction of the Qibla, subhanAllah, they're right here. These compass apps, or whether an actual compass, or even better, is learning <laughs> the shadows, which is how people before compasses used to figure out the directions of the Qibla and also the timings of prayer. They figure out north, east, west, and south. One time, I'll tell you this very quick story. One time I came, I was in an international travel and the, the, my transit was very, very short. And when you're in an airport and you have to like run from one gate to another really quickly, and I had to catch prayer right in that little tiny window <laughs> or prayer would have left. And when you come out of an airport and you're like discombobulated, it's international, you don't know where you are, it's not, <laughs> you can't, you can't even speak what the language is that's going on, you, you, you're, it's kind of discombobulating. And I thought to myself, okay, at the very least, I'll look out and see like the shadows. Well, it turned out that by then it was very uh, cloudy and I couldn't figure out the direction of anything, where the sun was. So I said, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please help, Ya Allah. The interesting thing is in about an airport is that people, especially in an airport, know the directions. <laughs> You know which way is east, north, and south. And I said, what is the direction of east? Help me. Just give me one. Just give me east. Do something. You know? And so, subhanAllah, as I came out of the airport, and the, the person who answered my question said, are you looking for the Qibla? And I thought, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, it was the Muslim brother. I couldn't tell, subhanAllah. But he could see I was frazzled trying to figure out the direction of prayer. Or at least a direction. And I thought, Allah sends you people, subhanAllah. With a good intention, Try your very hardest. Now I'll tell you a follow-up story. One time, two of us who had taken a fifth class together were in another conference and we had to pray. And we had nothing with us to figure out exactly the direction inside of a building. It's all like close and it was actually nighttime. It was a night prayer. So there was no sun to exactly see where it set it, where it, you know, where it came up and where it set. And so anyway, the rule in the fifth book is you have to do your best effort to figure out the direction of the Qibla. And if the two of you disagree, each one has to pray according to the Qibla that they figure it out is the best. And so I tried to convince her it's this way. And she tried to convince me it's this way. And we couldn't <laughs> agree. We had both studied fiqh. We were both students of fiqh. And at the end, we both said, we know what the rule is. And each one prayed on our own. And it, and it counted for each person because they did the prerequisite. So I always tell people, don't walk into a room just go, um, Allah Akbar. <laughs> you got to give some effort, some effort of figuring out east, north, west, and south. Now, in terms of wudu, the answer is the same. It requires a full wudu always, right? And with the few, or I say, with the few exceptions, but they have to qualify for the exceptions that require a dry ablution or tayammum. And if it does not qualify for tayammum, then a full water wudu is actually required if your wudu was broken. But if you're one of the lucky people that know how to carry a wudu from one prayer to another, some people are a ken, they don't like break wudu easily, you'll carry wudu for a little while. Otherwise, it is hard. And nowadays in the university where I work, there's a lot of same gender, like one gender bathrooms, right? Listen. The rooms, the, ba the bathrooms, I mean, that have the one-person stalls, and they say, for everybody, all genders. I'm like, fine, because at least it closes the door and I'm able to use this. I use this in airports, I use this in bathrooms, in, in schools, colleges, everywhere, wherever I am. If I can find that, it's easy because you can close the door and easily make wudu, right? And if not, then it's hard. Yes, it's hard, but it is part and parcel of being Muslim.